Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Crash in the Amazon This story is incredible and very recent, so I'll tell you this one first. Four children have just survived 40 days lost in the brutal and unforgiving wilderness of the Amazon jungle. Leslie, Soleil, Tian, and Kristen were discovered by a rescue operation in mid-June. Rescue operators searched through over 1,600 miles of seemingly endless, dense jungle in a huge rescue codenamed Operation Hope. The oldest of the four children, Leslie, is only 13 years old. The youngest was just 11 months old. The children have been airlifted by Colombian special forces to the capital city of Bogota. Everyone in Colombia and the world was shocked and thrilled that the children were found alive after the incredible ordeal of not only surviving a plane crash, but the challenges of the jungle. But there are so many questions. The main one is how could they have possibly survived? General Pedro Sanchez, the leader of Operation Hope, to find the children said they had the will to live. They are also indigenous people from the Huitoto tribe, so they had immunity to many of the hazards that would kill other people in the jungle. Their ancestors have been living in the Amazon for thousands of years. They aren't going to get as sick the way an outsider would. And also, the general said, the children knew the jungle. It's practically in their blood, so they recognize what they could eat. But still, it wasn't easy for the children who were able to live through something that would be practically impossible for most adults. But what happened to them in the first place? The children were traveling with their mother from a small village in the Amazon to another town to visit their father. The father said that they were escaping a guerrilla group who had threatened to take him and the children to turn them into soldiers. So they boarded a single-engine Cessna, a typical bush plane used to get around in the Amazon. On May 1, 2023, the plane crashed. Its nose hit the dense undergrowth in a fireball of twisted metal. When rescue operators discovered the wreckage 16 days later, the bodies of three adults were there, but not the children. The Colombian military joined forces with indigenous guides to search for them, filled with hope that they were still alive. In later interviews, the children said their mother had survived for four days after the crash, but got worse and told them to leave to save themselves. Rescue operators say the kids stuck around the plane as long as they could. They ate what little food was in the Cessna, then went in search of more. NPR reports that the children probably abandoned the crash site to get away from the dead bodies, which could attract dangerous animals, and also to look for food and water. The military and indigenous volunteers used everything at their disposal – reconnaissance flights, infrared sensors, but the jungle was so thick it was easy to get lost. It was constantly raining, and they said they were wet the whole time. Thanks to their upbringing and resourcefulness, the children were able to eat, protect themselves with tarps and mosquito nets, and even performed ceremonies, all while carrying around an 11-month-old baby. The children were able to feed the baby yucca flour mixed with water. They climbed trees for fruit and seeds, and they also found a box of food airdropped by the military. During this time, the baby turned a year old, and another brother turned five years old. The military played a message from the children's grandmother over and over so they wouldn't hide, but it wasn't until a Belgian shepherd rescue dog named Wilson found the children that they were officially rescued. They were weak and fragile with their clothes in tatters. They were wrapped in blankets, and the rest is history. Wilson, however, has now gone missing, and a formal search is underway to find him. And now for number nine. But first, it's showdown time. I want to give a big thank you to Da for the generous super thanks. Be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family and let us know if you'd be able to survive in the jungle in the comments below. Number nine, Cliff Fall. On July 6, 2018, Angela Hernandez from Oregon took a trip through California's Big Sur. She was driving her SUV along the highway when a small animal suddenly jumped in front of her vehicle. Angela, being a kind and loving human, swerved to avoid hitting the poor creature. Thing is, you are never supposed to swerve for a small animal. I hate to say it, but that's what they teach you. And this is why. She was in a bad place on the road right next to a massive cliff. Angela's kind-hearted instincts caused her to plunge off the side of a cliff. Her SUV plummeted 250 feet onto the rocky shores of California. 
Angela was in rough shape when the SUV hit the sand. She blacked out and woke up with the SUV slowly filling with water. She was covered in blood and horribly injured. Angela barely managed to pull herself out of the wreckage before she drowned. But she did, and she moved away from the vehicle thinking the worst was over. Angela was very wrong. Although she was only 250 feet from the busy highway, she might as well have been on the moon. The vehicles driving way up on the road couldn't see her, and nobody could hear her screams. She spent days injured on a desolate stretch of sand and fog, thinking she was going to die down there. On the third day, Angela realized she was dehydrated. She had to use a radiator hose to siphon fresh water spilling out of a crack in the cliff. She thought about trying to walk out, but was stuck on a tiny patch of rocky land with nowhere to go. Her legs were too badly damaged anyway, she would have only been able to crawl. After seven days stuck on the rocks, Angela was finally saved by a complete coincidence. A couple happened to be hiking along the remote beach and heard her desperate cries for help. Number 8. The Vietnamese Tarzan in 1972, a man named Than lost half his family during the Vietnam War. A bomb was dropped on Than's village, destroying everything. Fearing for his life and the life of his two-year-old son, Than retreated into the Vietnamese jungle. He spent the next 41 years surviving off plants and wild animals. Than and his son Lang survived in a timber hut built 15 feet off the forest floor. According to one of the man's close friends, explorer Alvaro Cerezo, Than feared leaving the jungle. He believed the Vietnam War would never end, so he stayed in the forest living like it was prehistoric times. He and his son only left the jungle a few years ago when they were officially discovered. They emerged wearing loincloths made from tree bark, and Than's son Lang could barely speak a word of any language. He hardly knew how to communicate and didn't even know women existed. This story raises so many questions like why didn't Than teach his child to speak? Or at least give him a simple, basic education? And what kind of adventures did they have? They must have been through a lot. Than was dubbed the Vietnamese Tarzan. In 2017, Than died at the age of 86. He had been persuaded to return to the village he originally left all those years ago. But after arriving, Than's health quickly deteriorated. Lang took to civilized life okay, especially after seeing his first woman at 43 years old, according to reports. He worked on a farm and bonded with a few of his family members still living there, including nieces and nephews. But it wasn't long before Lang was diagnosed with untreatable liver cancer. It's believed Lang's cancer was caused by his introduction to society. He started to drink alcohol and eat processed food. Lang also came under the stresses of modern society. In 2021, Lang passed away. Some speculate he may have lived another 30 years had he continued to live alone in the jungle. What do you think? Is it better to live in modern society or is there something to be said for living in the jungle alone? Let me know in the comments. Number 7. Ketchup at Sea Elvis Francois spent 24 days drifting through the Caribbean Sea. Elvis, who hails from the island nation of Dominica, was making repairs to his small sailboat near the island of St. Martin in December of 2022. Suddenly, out of nowhere, things took a terrible turn. He hadn't been planning on going out to sea. He was just trying to fix his boat. A sudden storm pushed Elvis's boat out into the sea, and he began to drift way too far from land. Elvis doesn't have any notable navigational skills. He knows how to use a boat, but he doesn't know how to navigate at sea. So he failed to get his boat back to shore as the weather pushed him deeper and deeper into the unknown. Soon enough, he was surrounded by nothing but the open ocean. Elvis was completely disoriented. He had nobody to talk to and no way to call for help. But he did have some ketchup, which helped Elvis survive. In January, Elvis Francois was discovered 120 nautical miles from Puerto Bolivar in Colombia. A plane flying overhead noticed the word help carved into the side of the sailboat. Elvis may not have known how to find land, but at least he understood how to attract attention. He did everything he could to alert passing planes, other than maybe lighting his sails on fire. According to what Elvis said after he was rescued by a Colombian rescue team, it was a bottle of ketchup that saved his life. He had no food except a single bottle of ketchup, some garlic powder, and chicken stock cubes. 
Elvis mixed the ketchup and garlic powder with some water simply to provide himself with enough sustenance to keep going. He said it was very hard being alone for so long and that sometimes he lost hope, but then he thought about his family. After being rescued, Elvis was transported to Cartagena to receive medical care. Then he was transferred into the custody of immigration authorities to be shipped back to Dominica. In March 2023, it was revealed that the Heinz Ketchup Company was searching for Elvis. The ketchup mogul wanted to get in touch with the guy so that they could do something special for him, seeing as he has been a pretty good spokesman for their ketchup brand. If you had to survive on one condiment for 24 days at sea, what would you choose? Let me know in the comments. Number 6. Is the Revenant true? Hugh Glass was a rugged American frontiersman in the 19th century. He was an expert fur trapper who often worked as a guide when newcomers came to North America from Europe. Fur was big business back in the day, and you could make a killing. In 1823, Hugh worked as a guide for General William Henry Ashley. The general was leading a large party of fur trappers when they were ambushed by a pair of Arikara warriors. Fifteen people in Ashley's party were killed during the attack. As the Europeans continued to flee through the North American wilderness, Hugh was busy at the head of the party scouting for danger. It's difficult to confirm everything involved in the story, since the legend of Hugh Glass spread by word of mouth 200 years ago. Still, Hugh supposedly encountered a grizzly bear as he was scouting far ahead in the forest. The grizzly bear was a mama with two cubs, not the kind of animal you want to mess with. He was ferociously mauled by the monstrous bear, but he shot her in the end. Hugh Glass had some serious injuries that he sustained from the bear attack. He was far too damaged to continue with Ashley's party as the guy. Two members of the party stayed back with Hugh, just in case he recovered and could be saved. The two men were John Fitzgerald and Jim Bridges. After a couple of days, John and Jim became fearful for their own lives. Hugh didn't seem to be getting much better, and they were worried they too would be killed by beasts or the weather. They abandoned Hugh, leaving him for dead. They even took all his tools and supplies. Hugh survived by crawling through the forest, eating roots and picking berries. He would go on to make a full recovery, then show up later like a ghost at Fort Kiowa. If this story sounds familiar, it's because it's the plot of the movie The Revenant, which is based on the epic survival story of Hugh Glass. The biggest difference between the movie and reality is that Hugh likely didn't go on a bloody killing spree to get revenge against the man who left him in the wild, but maybe. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. Duggar Plane Crash In October of 2021, John David and Abby Duggar crashed their airplane and almost died, yet came out totally unscathed. John, 32 years old at the time, was the one piloting the aircraft. The Humphreys County Sheriff's Department said the incident happened at around 7 o'clock p.m. in Waverly, Tennessee. John said the plane suffered from double engine failure and he was forced to make an emergency landing in a field. The preliminary report from the National Transportation Safety Board confirmed there was not a single injury sustained. There was John David and Abby along with two unnamed passengers. Nobody was hurt, but the aircraft itself was ripped to shreds. It was utterly destroyed, making the fact that no one was injured feel like a miracle. John David works for MediCorps, a nonprofit that transports relief staff and other supplies to regions affected by severe natural disasters. He wasn't flying the plane for work, but it was registered to the company. When asked how they felt about the incident, the couple said they're just happy to be alive. Nobody understands how everyone on board the aircraft walked away with so much as a scratch. It was truly a bizarre stroke of luck for the Duggar family. Living through a plane crash sounds absolutely terrifying. Before we move on to number four, I want to give another shout out to Jorge Baptista for supporting this channel. This channel wouldn't be what it is without supporters like you. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Number four, hitting the ground hard. On November 14, 2021, adrenaline junkie Jordan Hatmaker hit the ground at 125 miles per hour. Jordan comes from Virginia Beach. She loves every kind of thrill ride or adventure experience she can get her hands on. November 14 was her 16th solo jump out of an airplane. The skydiver knew exactly what she was doing, but that didn't prevent disaster. As she leapt from the plane, Jordan became entangled in her parachute. Jordan had been working toward her accelerated freefall A license. 
This would be the proof needed for Jordan to finally be allowed to jump without any kind of supervision. But on that day, things went as wrong as they possibly could. The malfunction is known as a horseshoe. It's when the bridle gets wrapped around the jumper's leg. It might have been okay, but Jordan's backup parachute also malfunctioned. Her leg was twisted in the ropes of her primary parachute. Then her reserve parachute was sent in the wrong direction. In the diving community, this is what they call a downplane. The reserve parachute was out, but it only worsened the situation by pushing Jordan into an accelerated downward spiral. At 300 feet off the ground, her primary parachute suddenly deployed, but it didn't slow her fall. 20 seconds from the time she jumped out of the airplane, Jordan hit the ground hard. In most cases, slapping the ground at 125 miles per hour would knock you out cold, but Jordan stayed completely conscious. She lay there awake until rescue operators got her airlifted to Centara Norfolk General Hospital in Virginia. She spent 25 days in the hospital with a cornucopia of injuries, a shattered ankle, broken shin bone, spinal injury, and shattered back. Doctors said it was a miracle Jordan didn't die, and a double miracle that she would make a full recovery. Just a few weeks after she returned home, Jordan was already committed to a trip to Everest. The trip had been scheduled before her unfortunate fall from 13,500 feet. Even though she was still stuck in bed at home, Jordan was determined to at least make it to Mount Everest Base Camp. She likely couldn't make it to the top of the mountain in her condition, but she would try to get as close as possible. Number 3. A Polar Nightmare Douglas Mawson was the leader of one of the worst polar expeditions in human history. He was also the only member of his party who didn't die, killed by the brutal cold. Douglas set out across the Southern Ocean in search of adventure in 1912. He was 30 years old and an acclaimed geologist. Born in England, Douglas had moved to Australia and settled there. This brought him in close proximity with Antarctica, making polar expeditions easier. He led the Australasian Antarctic Expedition, which anchored off the coast of Antarctica in January 1912. Douglas's plan was to split his expedition force into four different groups. Each group would head into the interior to complete scientific work. He himself would lead the Far Eastern Shore Party. The party consisted of three men, and their goal was to travel hundreds of miles to survey glaciers. What happened next was utterly terrifying for the explorers. They moved deeper and deeper into frozen territory. They kept almost falling in the cracks in the ice. One of the members had snow blindness. Within a few short days, things were looking bad. On December 13th, the explorers made camp in a glacier. Through the night, the men lay scared, listening to the cracking and booming beneath them. It was just the sound of the ice, but the men had no idea what it was. To them, it sounded like monsters. The next day, Belgrave Ninnis fell through a crack in the ice and was gone forever. His sled went with him, taking the majority of supplies. The other two scientists had no choice but to turn back, but then Xavier Mertz grew ill. After a week of laborious movement, he died. This left Douglas Mawson to carry on alone. He trudged across Antarctica for a month, pulling his sleigh with him. He was sick, weak, and close to death. He almost made it to the main base, but got pinned down by a blizzard for a week. When he finally got to the base, the ship had left without him just hours before. In the ship's defense, they had waited three weeks already. They had also left behind a shore party, along with enough supplies to last a few months. Douglas and the shore party were forced to camp at the edge of Antarctica until next December, when the ship came back to pick them up. Number 2. Dangerous Fall Rosemary Frank was 91 years old in 2020 when she took a nasty tumble. Rosemary fell down inside her home in Kempsey, the UK, and was discovered two days later by a volunteer bus driver. After she was taken to the hospital, doctors said Rosemary was six hours from dying. If she hadn't been found in the next few minutes, she likely would have perished. The really shocking part of the story is that Rosemary Frank survived lying on the floor of her home in terrible agony by eating plant soil. For two long days, she sustained herself on dirt. Rosemary takes the bus to her hair salon religiously. When she didn't show up at her normal time, her bus driver got extremely worried. 
Volunteer bus driver Derek Cowdery was so concerned for the senior citizen, he took time out of his own schedule to check on her. Derek knocked on her neighbor's doors until he found someone with a key to her apartment. Derek let himself in and found Rosemary lying on the floor of her room, covered in plant soil. The plant had been a gift from her son, but he could never have imagined it would save her life. Number 1. Alone in the Amazon Jonathan Acosta recently spent a month alone and afraid in the Amazon jungle. The 30-year-old story might not seem that impressive after hearing about the young children who survived 40 days in the Amazon, but these were different circumstances. The Bolivian was on a hunting trip with some friends when he accidentally got separated on January 25, 2023. 30 days later, search and rescue teams found him withered and haggard. He was wandering through the jungle half-dead. After a month, Jonathan was on his last leg. The big difference between Jonathan and the children from Colombia is that Mr. Acosta was not from an indigenous tribe. He was on a hunting trip with a couple of buddies and only knew basic survival techniques. He survived not by using ancient knowledge passed down through generations, but by eating worms and drinking his own urine. It rained nearly the entire time he was lost, allowing Jonathan to collect rainwater easily with his rubber boots. But he wasn't very good at preserving the water. When it stopped raining for a day or two, he resorted to drinking his own bodily fluids. He ended up wandering over 25 miles, but he was going in circles. It didn't help that he dislocated his ankle and was feasted upon by all breeds of horrible bugs. He got into a fight with a wild pig, and Acosta also said he was briefly stalked by a big cat of some kind. It was a real nightmare for Jonathan. When Jonathan was finally rescued, he had lost almost 40 pounds and was days away from death. Do you think you could survive alone and afraid in the Amazon jungle? If so, for how long? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and let me know if you'd like to see more survival stories coming up. See you later. Bye.